everybody. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Misty Doan, here at the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm really excited. I have another fun holiday project for you, which is why our beautiful holiday Missouri Star Quilt is hanging behind us. Um, this is our same Missouri Star Quilt pattern that you can find on uh, our YouTube channel, just made in some fun festive colors. But the project we're going to be making today is actually this stretch periwinkle table topper. Um, so you're going to need this stretch periwinkle template. It's like this. It's made for 10 inch squares. I know if you're like me, I looked at this thing and I'm like, how in the world is that going to fit on a 10 inch square? I promise it does. So if you want to make one this size, uh, be sure to have that. We um, also can make these really cute little um, kind of placemats or, or bowl cozies using the wacky web template with the exact same idea. So either one of these templates that you have um, could come in really handy for this project. The fabric we're going to be using to make this is this Holiday Charms Holiday Color Story pack of 10 inch squares by Robert Kaufman. It's these beautiful um, Christmas holiday prints and they have that metallic um, look to them printed with the metallic ink. It's not glitter so it's not going to flake off but it does have a little bit of sheen which is always fun for the holidays. And then you're also going to need um, some backing fabric uh, if you decide to turn this the way that we're going to. Well you're going to need backing fabric either way. But we just, we just flipped it um, so that I didn't have to bind all of these points around. So let me show you how we're going to dive right into this. So let's begin by picking out our 10 inch squares to make the larger table topper. So I've got four different ones here. You can see I've selected this poinsettia and these kind of look like snow falling, some candy canes, and then just these gold stars on the green background. So I'm going to stack these nice and straight because I'm going to go ahead and cut through all four layers at once. We just want to make sure that they're not going to shift on me and everything will match up. There's that. Okay. And I don't really like to do any more than four when I'm cutting something like this, but I think this is still completely manageable. So I'm going to begin by putting my large side of my template into the corner. And I'm going to start by cutting this first side. I want to make sure my blade might be getting a little dull. Make sure I cut all the way through and then we'll set that aside. If you have a rotating mat, you could go ahead and use this. I'm just going to be very careful here and just pivot this a little bit. Put my large corner back into that corner that we cut because I don't want to be cutting towards myself, especially when I'm dealing with you know, four layers of fabric um, and a longer stretch of cutting. You just never want to cut towards yourself. Not worth the risk. So now we're cutting away. That gives us control. And then we're also going to be sure to um, cut off this little notch at the end. So there's that. Okay. And so now you can see I've got four of these kind of kite shapes ready to go. And I did already start one half of this and I want to kind of make sure that these alternate the same way. And so I'm going to start by sewing my poinsettia to the black background snowflakes. And then I'm going to sew the candy canes to the green stars. And so I'm putting these right sides together and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam on this right side here. Let's take this to the machine, line up our edge and so a quarter inch seam. There we go. And then I can follow right behind with this one. Just make sure that fabric is lined up. There we go. Okay, so now I can trim those two apart. And since I just want to repeat the pattern that I've already started so that they kind of chain all the way around, 
I am going to sew the candy canes to the black background. You could go ahead and press these before you sew them together. I don't find that it's really a problem since I just have this one little seam at the bottom. I can make those go the way that I want. So I am just going to line these up. Sew a quarter inch down this side to attach our four pieces together. And I'm gonna line up my bottom edge so I can just zoom down. All right, so now we can press this nice and flat. I'm just gonna kind of let these seams go how they want. They don't really intersect, so I just want them to lay nice and flat. There we go. Perfect. And so now, let me press this again too since it was folded up before I got here. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our two halves together. You can see this other side was made in the exact same way and our patterns just continue all the way around. And so we're gonna lay this half right sides together. And what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in here, not because I feel like I necessarily need it to do the sewing, but because I actually want to leave an opening in this because that's how I'm gonna turn this right sides out when I get to the end here. Um, since I just did some simple top stitch quilting once I've turned it, I, I actually closed the opening by doing the quilting. And I found that way easier than trying to turn it in a side and get this, this side edge to, to turn under and still have my point. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put a couple pins to remind us to leave an opening. And I don't wanna do it right over the middle where all of those seams are coming together because that um, can just be kind of a pain to deal with. So I'm gonna come out a couple inches from that middle seam here and just give myself a good six or so inches to be able to turn this later. So now I can start sewing here. I'll um, come to this pin and back stitch and then come and stitch up this other little end. So let's go ahead and take this to the machine and do just that. So as you get to the, the center, you, that is where you kind of do want to make sure your seams are nesting, that you're not getting a big knot in all those seams. So I'm just going to make sure that those lay together nicely. And we're going to sew over that. We're getting close to where I pinned, so we don't want to ever sew over that. I'll just back stitch. Go ahead and take my pin out of the way. Cut my threads. And then we can come down here. And, I, and now that I've remembered, I can go ahead and take that pin out of the way. And we'll back stitch. And we're doing that because when we turn this right sides out, we're going to be putting quite a bit of tension on those seams. And we just don't want to pop the threads loose. So now you can see how that comes together so nicely. So let's just give this a press. Let me move some of this out of the way. and get this to lay nice and flat. And so with this step, you might need to do some starching and um, finagling, but you can see here, hopefully you can see here, this is where my opening is, is on this side. And by leaving it here, this naturally wants to turn under that little quarter inch edge. And you can see how easy it's gonna be to go back and just top stitch over that um, to finish that off much easier than trying to catch a seam in the side. Okay, so once this is nice and pressed, we're ready to go ahead and make our quilt sandwich. So I'm gonna begin by taking my batting. This is just a scrap piece that I have. And we're gonna layer that with a piece of background fabric or backing fabric in this case. And then we're gonna put our table topper 
right sides down. And so this is where you just want to make sure everything is nice and smooth, that it's all laying beautifully. And I am just going to pin base this. I found that to be completely sufficient. So I'm just going to put some pins. I'm going to start at this top edge. And I want to make sure my points are staying where I want them to go. I'm just going to work my way around and make sure this continues to lay nice and flat. There we go. This is small enough that I didn't find that I really needed um, the free fuse that I like to use often or any type of basting spray. But if you're worried about it, you could absolutely um, use any of those products. So you can see I'm just smoothing as I go, working in one direction so any wrinkles can, can work themselves out. And this is going to be nice and flat before I take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to put a few more pins. I just don't want any of these points to lift when I get it over here. Go move this one out just a smidge. There we go. And so now remember, we left our opening here. So this is open for us to turn it when the time comes. So we can actually follow the edge of our table topper and we're going to enclose the entire outside edge. So I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm just going to stitch all the way around and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so now we have stitched all the way around. We can pull all of our pins out of the way or whatever you used to baste your layers in place. There we go. Get all the way put back. Perfect. So I actually like to go ahead and go back and cut this with my scissors. I find it difficult with the rotary cutter. I just don't want to run the risk of cutting through any of my stitch lines. So let me grab my scissors and we can take care of that. And so I'm just going to start trimming right in line with my fabric all the way around this. And that makes it easier to get in those corners. And not have to worry about cutting through our seams because then we would be so sad if we did that. So we'll just cut through and all the way around all of our layers. And if you're comfortable doing this with a rotary cutter, you absolutely could. Sometimes it's nice to bust out your scissors though. We're already halfway. Getting so close. A couple more cuts here. Okay, so now the bulk of that is taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of my way, put it in my scrap bin. And then let's talk about um, what we need to do to make sure there's not too much bulk when we turn this. So I'm actually going to go now and I'm going to trim off each of the tips, making sure I'm leaving about um, an eighth of an inch um, from my stitch line there on the, the points. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to trim off some of each side leading up to that. We just want to make sure that we have a little bit less bulk on each of those exterior points. 
by shaving some of that fabric and batting out of the way. And I also like to make a little snip in towards the middle so that we have a little bit of give there in the center as well. And so I'm gonna do that going all the way around. Just watching again, we don't wanna cut through those stitches. This part is really great to do while you're watching TV. All of the trimming. Or listening to TV, I should say. Not doing a whole lot of watching. All right. Go, make sure I get those little corners. And a little bit goes a long way on those inside corners. You just kind of want to give them some, um, just a little bit of freedom to be able to move around um, when we go to turn it. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see I'm not snipping off much and we've made it all the way around. So that's just that little bit of bulk that we want to trim off. And so now, we can find our opening that we left and we can turn this all right sides out through that. There we go. And once I get most of it, I like to go back with either my fingers or a chopstick or if you have a turning tool that you love to poke out each of those exterior points just want to take your time and do that. Work your way all the way around. I'm just going to get this close and then I'll show it to you guys on the finished one. So there you go. You can see how easily that turns. And then we're just gonna go back and we're gonna do some top stitching both direction. And then I top stitched all the way around the outside edge as well. And by doing that top stitching, you can see if I'm following right along the edge of this fabric right here, that would just enclose my opening. And so that's how we did this one. And so when you're using the stretch periwinkle and your full 10 inch squares, it takes eight of these wedges, so eight 10 inch squares to make your top. If you have the smaller periwinkle or wacky web template, it takes six and you can make these little placemats or bowl cozies um, using the exact same methods, but these fit obviously on a five inch square. So, so many fun things you can do with this. And if you um, were looking for a great Christmas gift or um, something to decorate your holiday table. I hope this provided you with a little bit of inspiration and until next time, have a wonderful week and I will see you soon.